Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church Online. It's such a beautiful morning, and we're so glad to see your beautiful faces through this screen. So we're waiting for people to join online with us. But yes. hey, if you're a first-time viewer, welcome. We are so excited that you've decided to join us. Um, all you have to do is type first in the comment section, and we would love to connect with you. And you know what? It's been incredible these yeah. past, like, what? Has it been, like, two weeks now? I've already lost track of time. <laughs> it's been two weeks. <laughs> it feels like time just comes together. <laughs> Seriously. And it's just been, it's been incredible to see how the church has completely transformed. Yeah. And we've been able to adapt with everything that's going yeah. on. And so even though we're living in difficult times right now, it has been incredible to know that as a church we've been hearing amazing, amazing testimony. So I'm yeah. just going to list a few, and literally, these are just yes. a few. Let's do it. So there's been healing happening through live stream. I mean, people are literally feeling the presence of God through their TV screens, through their laptops, their Macs, whatever it is. And businesses are prospering. There's people who have businesses right now that are actually doing better than what they thought they would be doing. Yep. Um, people who are laid off, they're finding new jobs, which is incredible, especially during this time right now. Um, People who are needing miracles, they're receiving it. And our favorite one is this. We are seeing people come to Christ every single week online. It's been incredible to see people just say yes to God. And like I said, they don't have to be physically in the church building, even though we would love for them to be here with us. It has been incredible to see that God can reach someone through what they're watching. And so thank you so much for being a part of that. And um, we're just excited for when we come back. And so Sarah, I can tell you that that has been incredible for us. Yeah, we're all stretching. We're all adapting. It's been difficult for some of us. Some of us are thriving right now. All my introverts in the house, you're like, hey, all my extroverts are like dying to get out of the house <laughs> and have some physical interaction. But um, we're also taking this opportunity to reach out to people, to stay connected. Yeah. So for anybody that's cooped up this is your time to stretch and one of the ways you can do that is with our virtual e-groups and um, you can do that by downloading our church app and signing up on there and we find a perfect group tailor made for you you can do that with our church app Alexa is showing right here. it showing you right there it's so beautiful it is super easy you download the elevate church app and then you sign up and then we get you connected that way and then for my extroverts you've been waiting for this you're like when how can i get connected this is how you do it you download the church app and again they find a perfect fit for you um, you can also stay connected by following our youtube channel um, online so this is how we're doing it we're doing everything virtual follow us on instagram um, we also have something for the kids so don't yes. forget the ninos um, you can do that by it's eKids SCV, and that's our our kids' videos and our YouTube channel for the kids. So we are reaching out to our entire family, even the youth group as well. So follow that's us right. on our Instagram for youth group as well. You can find that all on our church Instagram, on our main church Instagram for that. Yeah, no, it's incredible. So there's so many ways to stay connected. And just want to touch on that virtual e-groups. We just started them uh, last week. It was our first introduction, and people... They're like, it's only 40 minutes, so people have been craving just more time with that. Yeah. And so we super encourage you. We have amazing, amazing e-group leaders who are literally diving into the word. We're talking about Sunday's messages. We're talking about how do we apply it? How do we challenge ourselves? Because it's more than just reading something. It's finding application to do it. And this is not the time to shrink back. This is the time to push forward yeah. and to move forward in everything that we're doing. So Sarah, it's easy. A, it's easy to do that. Yeah. It's easy to just shrink back and just be like, "Ooh, this is my opportunity to lay back, lay low." Uh-uh. No, that's the time yeah. that that you need to step out, connect, and then find, excuse me, find the family and elevate church that yeah. we're, we're going to encourage each other. So. I think that's what I love about our church is that there's we are family, regardless of yeah. not even being in this building, is that we're family all the time. And when this whole thing lifts up, we want to see walking through those doors. Yes, so we're going to be like, woo, woo. Yep. Sarah, I, mean, I have a question for you. How yes. have you been handling this whole time? Has your relationship with God increased? What, what's yes. going on with you? It's been, it's been really cool, actually. For me, I'm an introvert, so I thought it was going to drive me You're an insane. Introvert? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm an extrovert. That's what I meant to say. I thought it was going to drive me insane. 
Like I literally, like the first few days, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm already going crazy in my mind just thinking of how it's gonna be. But actually, it's been so nice. I've had to have a lot, I've spent a lot of much needed time with my family. I've spent a lot, a lot much needed time with God. Um, it's been so cool just being, um, very productive with my day like I, I'm at home right now because my job unfortunately had to close down so I've had all this time and I'm like thriving even if I but at the same time I do need people so I'm so excited for the e-groups yeah. I am so excited yeah and you know what if you need prayer you can text yes you can text us at 661-403. It'll be down below yes, as well. Yes, 4505. We'll have that. Man, we're here to pray for you. We, like I said, we are engaged with you. So yes. if you need prayer, text us. If you need anything at all, if you need groceries, if you need yeah. anyth any, anything for your household, if your family is in need and you guys are struggling, yes speak out also text that number that we that is below the 661-403-4505 because we're here to help you're not alone so don't try and do it all alone yes. because we're here for you yeah and remember if this is your first time being with us thank you so much all you yes. have to do is type first on the comment section below and we would love to connect with you and i'm telling you we have an incredible service coming up it's a new series called drip 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 we decided to make a song with it drip 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 a, a, drip drip a, a, drip, a, a, drip. A, a. just kidding <laughs> um but we're so excited for what's going to happen so make sure you get your pens your bibles Make sure you get your aunts, your uncles, your friends, your family, your, your cousins, your dogs, and come sit together and come sit together with each other and get ready for an amazing, amazing message. And we'll see you soon. Hey everyone, welcome to Church Online at Elevate. We want to invite you to join us and stand to your feet. We're going to come into the presence of Jesus today. Every day, holy, we're 
your name or still call these bones to ring once again I will praise oh Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence
that true. These are the words that we're declaring amongst the circumstances that we're in. Whether it feels like the world is caving in, whether it feels like we're being surrounded by darkness, we are here to declare as one church that we have a God who has a name above all names. In our homes, just because we can't meet here physically in church doesn't mean that the enemy is going to take away our praise. It doesn't mean that we're going to stop singing. It doesn't mean that we're going to stop raising our hands. It doesn't mean that we're going to stop jumping up with joy. Well, we're going to declare that his name is the name above all names. That he overcame all darkness.
last time we sing. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus.
Man, welcome Elevate Church. It's so good to be back with you on Sunday. I know that we're not meeting or gathering in the building, but I know that there are countless people watching from all over the world, literally. There's people watching from other parts of the world, different states, and especially all of you that are watching right here in our surrounding cities. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're watching for the first time, if you are a first-time viewer on Elevate Church, all I want you to do is type in the word first on the commentary. And as you type in first, church, you know how we do it. I want you to type yay when people type in first. So if you're watching for the first time, we want to reach out to you. There's a special number that we want you to text your information to. And uh, you just type in first to the 661 number. And one of our team members want to connect with you, love on you. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And church, I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying that, that God is lifting up your spirit. I'm praying that, that the spirit of God is filling your heart, your mind, your home, your life with his holy presence. I'm praying that in this hour that you're using it wisely. I know that right now the world is scattered. The church is scattered. But we're scattered for a reason. There's a purpose. God won't waste a scattering. You're like seed in the hand of God. God has scattered the seed all over the world so that we can be the light of the earth. Come on. We're the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. We, we bring flavor in crisis. And that's who you are in Jesus. And I just want us to pray. Would you bow your head, close your eyes before we get into this. I just want to pray this real quick. Father, I pray that your spirit, your healing power, Father, is flowing into every single screen, every laptop, every phone, every television. Father, whatever means they are using to hear this message today, we pray that the angel of the Lord in campground around every house and that no weapon formed against any person will prosper. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that faith is rising in your people and that despair is diminishing and fear is subsiding because, Father, we know that we have an anchor in Jesus. 
I pray that those who have been laid off work will bounce back. They'll not only bounce back, Father, but they'll bounce back with greater blessing. I pray that they will not only have new opportunities, but they'll actually step into the jobs that they desire. They'll step into jobs that they have been waiting for. Father, I pray that with you, God, there is no lack. I pray in the name of Jesus that all sickness, disease, famines, fears are bound from our home, Father. I thank you that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Father. And I thank you that in the midst of all this crisis, we are going to have the greatest testimonies on how God showed up in our darkest hour. Father, we declare that this is the day which you have made. And we will, come on, everybody say, I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. If you believe that prayer, I want you to start clapping in your house right now. Come on. Make the kids clap. If you got little babies, grab their little hands and clap too. Come on. Let's all clap and give the Lord a big shout of praise. Say amen, amen, and amen. Praise Jesus. Well, so great to have you back watching online. And once again, I'm so grateful and thankful for all of our amazing volunteers that have been helping us keep all this live stream working from our commentators. Thank you, commentators. You guys rock. Thank you, prayer team members that are taking phone calls. You guys rock. And thank you, sound media and all you guys. You guys all rock. You guys are amazing. Come on, church. Give them a big hand from your house. Come on. Why don't you comment it? Thank you, volunteers. And uh, I just love what God's doing. We're taking opportunity. Well, you know that today's Sunday. We have a 9 a.m., 11 a.m. online. And uh, you have both options always every single weekend to tune in. And then you have Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. to be online as well. So just want to remind you, we're always ready online for you. But one thing we do is we always come back and we receive the tithes and the offerings. And, you know, as I was just thinking about this, when you're living on certain times, I know that it can be very sensitive when it comes to our economy. But how many know that God's not moved by the economy of this world? And if God's not moved by the economy of this world then neither should I and neither should you. I'm not saying don't be concerned, all right? Concern is something that we can experience, but worry leads to fear. And so I can be concerned, but I know how to bring all my concerns to the Father. And I was just thinking about a verse in Malachi 3.10. I'm not going to go there, but Malachi 3.10 says this. He says, when you bring the tithe, when you bring the offering, when you bring it to God's house, God says, I will open the windows of heaven and I'll pour out blessings. Now listen, that, that's either a fairy tale to you or that's the truth. When God opens his windows, let me tell you something. There's the blessing of work. There's the blessing of health. There's the blessing of unity. There's the blessing of peace. God says, trust me in these times. My favorite part about that verse, he says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. Come on. There is a spirit of devour that is hitting the world, the globe. And God's saying, listen, when you trust me, when you bring your tithe, when you bring the offering, I will rebuke that devour for your name's sake. I'll rebuke poverty. I'll rebuke lack. I'll rebuke any spirit that's trying to come and grip you with fear. God's saying, I'll rebuke it for you. I'll do it for you. And so today, as you bring your tithe, you can do text to give or you know, a lot of people, it's been, it's been such a blessing. People have been literally driving to the church, those who still write checks, um, and they drop it off in the mailbox. And I love the responses of people. They are writing on their tithe, their offerings. Come on, in their giving, they're saying, fear not. This is the time to sow seed and say, God, I will trust you. I will trust you. You know, if you, if you have a job, you're blessed. Come on, if you're someone that you're lacking a little bit because you were laid off, come on, you can still give a gift. And I want you to know it's in these times where the church can be the response to this, this challenge that we're facing. And this week we've been getting, you know, more phone calls now for help. And we've had the honor and blessing to be able to bring groceries to people's house um, and, and to help them a little bit, bless them with groceries or little needs they have. And I want you to know that we are here for you, Elevate Church. We are here for you. We love you. And let's keep trusting God. All right. So let me pray. Father, we thank you that as we bring our tithe, that you rebuke the devourer for us. 
I thank you that the windows of heaven are open, Father, when we trust you financially. There is no lack in your kingdom, God. There's only blessing. There's only vision. There's opportunity. Help us, Father, to be people that are connected to the vine. Father, that's where the, the juice, the power flows into the branches. We are your branches. You're the vine, Father. You're where the source comes from. And so we thank you, Father, that we will fear not, and we know that you provide in every season in good economies and in bad economies. We pray this in Jesus' name, and if you believe that, say amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited about today's message. Uh, we're starting a new message series called Drip, and it'll probably just be like a two-weekend message series, and uh, I, I, I really believe we're going to enjoy ourselves. Let me start off with a scripture. I want you to go to Zephaniah. And you're like, Zephyr, what? Uh, it's it's the, the, the pages in your Bible that are stuck together that you've probably never read before. And I want you to look at Zephaniah either on the screen or use your Bible app and, and, and just follow along. And I want you to keep this verse, okay? Just take notes. Take a picture of your screen. How about that? If you don't feel like typing, just take pictures of all the points. But Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9, I want you to see this because this is so powerful. It says, for then... I will. Everybody say, I will. Okay, mind you, this is God speaking to a prophet, a voice of this man's generation. He says, I will restore to the peoples a pure language that they all, everybody say all. That means everybody. Listen, God is an opportunist. He wants to invite all. He said that all, I love this, that all may call. On the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. I love this verse because church, I want you to know that this is no time for the church. This is no time for the people to be divided. This is no time for us to bring conflict within ourselves. But to actually be the light to this world. To be the salt, the flavor of this earth. And to bring hope. And to bring healing. And to bring restoration. Notice in this verse that he said that he will restore when everyone comes to a place of one accord. We got to be in one accord as a church. We got to be in one accord in our homes. We got to be in one accord with our family. We got to be in one accord with our children. We have to be in one accord when it comes to the church. We're in one accord. I love this. It's the time to be in one accord. Notice that God didn't say, I'm going to give them a language. God didn't say, I'm giving you a language. No, God said in this verse, he said, I'm going to restore their pure language. Do you realize that God is restoring the purest language that we can have on this planet right now? God is restoring what the locust has eaten. God is restoring what we have forfeited. God is restoring what we have rebelled against. God is saying, I'm about to restore the purest language in your life. And I know you're probably wondering, what language are you talking about? Are you talking about Spanish, Chinese, Japanese? What language is he talking about? English? No, that's not the language. Let me tell you something. The purest language of God is your prayer. God is restoring prayer back in the world, not just in America. He's restoring it back in your life. He's restoring it back in the church. I need prayer. You need prayer. And there's three reasons why we pray. Let me give you these three points. Three reasons why we pray. Number one, when we pray, we invite God in. Listen, you will never invite God to be in you or with you until you start praying. When you pray, you're basically saying, uh, Lord, uh, here, it's like Jesus in Revelations 3.12. He says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. Guess what? God's never going to force himself into your life. Maybe you're someone listening right now. You're not a God person. You're not a church kind of person. But let me tell you something. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. That goes to the church too. He is knocking at the door of your heart this morning. You have the power to invite him in. You can invite him in to your crisis. You can invite him in to your family. You can invite him in to your house. Jesus wants to come in, but it happens through prayer. So the first one we pray to invite God in. The second reason we pray is because we communicate with God. It's the only way to talk with God. 
Do you realize that God not only wants to listen to our complaints, but God wants us to communicate with him and tell him how, how thankful and, and to show him the gratitude and, and, and to speak with him and tell him how much we love him. And, and he wants to hear your praise from your lips, not just, not just gimme, gimme, gimme prayers, but, but prayers that say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives me of all my iniquities, amen, who brings healing to all my body. That's the one that God wants us to pray. He wants us to pray with a praise. He wants us to shout with joy. He wants us to declare who he is on our behalf. He wants us to declare what he, not only what he's done, but what he's doing and what he's about to do. But that comes through communication. You got to start telling God, Lord, I know what you're about to do. I know that all this confusion is going to be literally turned around. Come on. God is going to turn the tables on the devil and we're going to see the greatest blessing in our life. And the third reason we pray is prayer is a key weapon. I want you to say that when we say it's a key weapon. Listen, if you don't have a prayer life, you're in trouble. It's the key weapon. Let me, let me prove it to you. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And while you go there, let me take a sip of my tea. I'll drink to that. Amen. Matthew 16, 19 says this. And I will give you... Come on, look at the person sitting next to you. If you're sitting by yourself, then point the finger at yourself. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Let me tell you something. There are times where I do not want to give my keys to my kids to my car. And yet God is willing to give us the keys to his own kingdom. That God is willing to give us his keys the key to prayer, the key to power, the key to presence, the key to faith. God gives us the keys of the kingdom. He says the kingdom of God is within you. We have the key. We have the pure language. And look on what he says. He says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. In other words... Jesus is saying, I'm trying to give you guys all authority. I want to give you all authority over every single spirit. Whether it's a spirit that is coming to torment you or whether it's the spirit of the Lord, amen, or whether it's the angels of God in camping ground around you. The angels of God are just waiting for you to pray. They're waiting for you to communicate. They're waiting for you to declare. The angels of the Lord are just waiting. They're right there with their swords drawn. But until you pray, they ain't moving. So he says, I'm giving you the keys to prayer. I love this. He says it's through prayer that you can forbid. And it's through prayer that you can permit. Do you realize that you can forbid COVID-19 from your house? You can forbid that. Listen, I, I get it. There's times where I'm feeling a little symptom like, ooh, is that a fever? Or like, <laughs> whoa, what is that? And, you, and I just start saying, I forbid I forbid COVID-19 in this body. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. God lives and dwells inside of me. This is God's house. Sickness has no place in my house. Sickness has no place in my life. Sickness has no place in this body. And you have to literally, you have to begin to speak that out loud. Why? You Listen, you could forbid, but you can also permit. Come on, this is where you start permitting the blessings of God. Come on, you start permitting the peace of God. You start giving God permission. You say, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, you know, Lord, I give you permission just to flood this house with joy. I'm giving you permission to flood this house with peace, with joy, come on, with rest. I, I have the key to pray peace in this house. That is my authority. And that's what God is saying to us. Can we give, give the Lord a big hand clap? Just encourage me a little bit. And just say, Pastor, I'm clapping. I'm clapping. Because I'll watch this later on tonight. Say it. I forbid. Now say it, I permit. You have the keys to prayer with all authority. Stop using prayer as this gimme from God and take authority over your health. Take authority over your wealth. 
Take authority over your conflict. It's not just give me, God, give me, give me, give me, give me. No, listen, I know that God wants to bless us. But God also wants us to be responsible with our authority. He wants us to be responsible with the power that he's given us. He's given us the key. That means that we put the key in the ignition and we can drive. Amen. So come on, forbid and permit. Take authority. God wants to restore. He said, I am wanting to restore the pure language of prayer. That's what he's saying to you. He wants to restore our prayer life. He wants to restore our connection life. Come on, our relationship. He wants to restore our life source. God is the source of everything we need right now. Not just prayer, but pure and powerful prayer. I love that verse. I hope that you chew on that this week. As a matter of fact, in our e-groups, they're going to continue this conversation. So sign up on the church app. Get into a virtual e-group. Don't be disconnected. Stay connected. Amen? Okay, so it's the language. Listen, the pure language is also that is the language that says this. Listen, when you have the pure language inside of your heart, when you have the pure language in your spirit, man, it's the language that says, and nothing will be impossible for me with God. There's a confidence that comes with this pure language. When you're willing to speak like that, let me tell you, heaven wants to move. Heaven wants to move on your behalf, on my behalf. But heaven is looking for someone that believes his word. Heaven is looking for someone that will double dog dare God. And say, you know, God, I ain't feeling that well right now. I, you know, I, I felt a little fever right now. But in the name of, I forbid this fever. On Wednesday night, let me tell you what happened. Someone sent me a long text after Wednesday night service. They were fevers and chills and cough and pain. And, and let me tell you something. As the word of God was going through the screen, God was healing them. And it wasn't that it was anything special. I mean, let me tell you something. When you get God's word inside of you, when you start praying like we were praying on Wednesday night, faith starts rising and sickness starts being devoured. And, and he sent me this text and said, hey, I, man, my fever was gone. You know, the chills were gone. Uh, the, 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 the pressure on my chest was gone. Let me tell you something. We take authority over that. Amen. So nothing will be impossible for me with God. If your life is marked by prayer, then prayer will be your constant companion in crucial moments like what we're facing right now. You'll be marked by prayer. When you hit great adversity, that's, that's, where, that's where you really discover who you are in God. When you're facing crisis, when you're facing challenges, that's when you know what you really believe. And so we have to get this. And so I want to show you the pure prayer life that Jesus dripped. Everybody say drip. Come on. Jesus was showing us how he dripped. He dripped with prayer. He dripped with power. He dripped with encouragement. He dripped with unity dripped with purpose and I'm going to show you right now but I want to lay a little foundation because I know this is going to be good this is going to bless you so get ready to drip look at your neighbor say get ready to drip come on listen you can be tripping or dripping it's your choice I rather drip than trip so we got to start dripping the presence of God dripping the anointing of God dripping with God's purpose God's vision and he this is how he does it so we know first of all that Jesus by his own admission said that nothing that he ever did, did he do alone. Look at John 5, 19. It says this, and Jesus gave them this answer. This is what he's telling his disciples. He says, very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does, the son also does. Let me tell you something. When you're in prayer, you know what God wants you to do. When you're in prayer, God will reveal to you the decisions you need to make. When you have no prayer, you start making decisions based on a temporary feeling. Getting some pretty bad results. And so Jesus himself is saying, hey, listen. Hey, guys, he's telling you, he, Elevate Church, let me, let, me, let me be straight with you. Uh, 
I make no decisions. I do nothing, nothing. I do nothing without first consulting God because without him, I can do nothing. In other words, Jesus said, I back up God's kingdom with my prayer life. That's how he spoke with, 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 with the Father. The Father, he said, I only, I only said what the Father told me to say, and I only did what the Father showed me. That's why this is so crucial. And all through Jesus' ministry, he prayed. He was intimately linked to the heart of the Father. Are you intimately linked? If not, no big deal. Don't get, don't get worried. Don't get all stressed out. Just be like, I'm about to get linked up. I'm about to start dripping you know, dripping with God's grace, God's love, God's mercy. Look at this. Seven times Jesus chose to pray. Let me show you these real quick. Number one, he prayed and dripped at his baptism. Luke notes when, when Jesus also, look at this in, in Luke 3.21. When Jesus also had been baptized and was praying and was what? Praying. It says the heavens were what? Opened. Come on. God wants, listen. If Jesus has the windows of heaven opening for him, he's saying to you and I, when you pray, you literally have the power to open heaven over your house. Come on, you want your house, your home, your life to be a hot spot for heaven right now when you pray. Second time, prior to the selection of the 12, prior to Jesus making a decision of his crowd, Prior to Jesus inviting people into close relationship, into his circle of influence. Come on, some of us are now, we need to start praying, what people do I need to keep in my life? And what people need to maybe be, you know, escorted out of my life? Because right now, your life is dependent on God's direction. And so Jesus was looking for direction from God. In Luke 6, 12, it says, on one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. He spent the night praying to God. He spent a whole night. Come on, right now we have plenty of time to pray. You can't make an excuse, oh, I'm too busy. Listen, you're never too busy. We learned that we're not too busy until all this hell broke loose. Now we're just like, whoa. We've got to pray. 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 We've got to pray just to make it. Remember that song? Hopefully you're laughing. Hopefully that wasn't a cheesy joke. But uh, he said he prayed all night. He prayed, Father, show me who will be a world changer in the mission you've given me. Come on, God has prayed for you. Jesus prayed for you and me. He prayed for us. He is, he's still praying for us. He's our intercessor. You're not alone. Don't ever be that person like, oh, nobody prays for me. Well, listen, if nobody's praying for you, then get the right people in your life that will pray with you, but that you'll also pray for. It's not just about who's praying for me. Hey, are you praying for the church? Are you praying for us? Are you praying for our leadership? Are you praying for, for the peace of God? Listen, we are, we are constantly dealing with stuff. Yesterday, I was busy all day visiting people. Why? Because that's the church. We need to help each other. But it's not just, hey, let's put the whole weight on the leadership. No, how about let's, let's put the whole weight on the body of Christ. Because when the whole body carries it, it's light. It's lighter when we all carry it together. When we pray together, we stay together. Amen? That's what happens. And so Jesus was teaching the disciples, pray for key decisions. There has never, ever been an effective servant of Jesus who led a prayerless life. Never. Never. Read the Bible. Never has there ever been an effective Christian, an effective follower of Jesus that had a prayerless life. Every single one of them prayed. Number three, Jesus also prayed after rejection. It says Jesus did mighty works in uh, Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum, but was rejected by the people in those towns. Let me tell you what Jesus did when he was rejected. Because it's times like this which I think is so much easier to share the gospel because people are afraid. People are scared. It's the easiest time. I really believe that. I know because I've been leading people to Christ. It's the easiest time to bring hope. And people are like, yes, I want Jesus. Yes. Why? 
Because let me tell you something, when, 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 when fear comes, people, you got, they got your ear now. But, but there's going to be people that are going to reject you. Family members are going to reject you. But what did Jesus do? If you look in verse 25, he said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. He prayed for those who rejected him. We have to remember that there may be some rejections. Maybe you're applying for jobs right now and you're getting a rejection after rejection. You just pray. You keep praying. And you believe God that not only will you get a new job, you're going to get a better job. You'll get paid more money. Come on. You'll, you no longer will be tolerated. You'll be working in a place where you're celebrated. Amen. Come on. That right there should get a big amen. You should type on your comment, A to the men. Amen. Okay, number four, prior to a breakthrough, Jesus prayed. Look at Luke 9, verse 18 through 20, just laying the foundation. And it happened as he was alone praying. Come on, you need to get alone in your prayer. I know that your house gets crazy when you have little ones. But guess what? You can go to the bathroom and shut the door. Oh, well, they're going to think I got, you know, like really bad something happening in there. Who cares? You're alone. You can pray. And when you pray alone... Powerful things happen. It says, and so when he was alone praying, that his disciples joined him and he asked them saying, who do the crowds say that I am? Mind you, this is prior to a breakthrough. There's about a break. A breakthrough is about to happen here. So they answered and they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. And others say that one of the old prophets has risen again. And, and, and look at Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? See, right now. Not only does God want to give you a breakthrough, but God wants you to see someone else get a revelation of who do they say he is right now. Who do you say I am? And look at this. And Peter answered and said, man, you are the Christ of God. That was a breakthrough. You know why? Because simply here, Peter confesses Jesus as Christ. Maybe you've never confessed Jesus as Christ. Maybe you're watching right now and you've known about religion. You've known about, you know, your family line maybe going to church. But I'm not talking to you about religion. I'm talking to you about a relationship with God. I'm telling you right now that God wants to have a personal, intimate relationship with you. Come on. Peter was finally able to see after a while he kept living in doubt and doubt and doubt. But then what happens? He says, I know who you are. Everybody else says you're all these other things, but I know who you are. You are, you are Christ the Messiah. You are Jesus, the Lord and Savior of my life. Come on, only prayer will give you a revelation of who God is. The fifth thing, I got only two more. Seven reasons or seven ways Jesus prayed. He prayed at a high moment of revelation. The transfiguration of Jesus occurred as a result of Jesus going away with Peter, James, and John. They're on this mountain. Jesus is praying. He's transfigured. They're, they're, they're experiencing a supernatural moment. Listen, nobody knows if it was Moses that showed up or for, if it was the prophet Elijah. But Jesus is having a, a, a dialogue, a meeting with someone. And Peter, James, and John, the intimate crew where they're watching this. And they're just like, whoa, are you seeing this? Here's what happens. When you pray. God will show you visions. God will show you dreams. God will, man, he'll light you up. He'll give you a creative idea on what you need to do next. He'll give you a creative business idea. He'll give you a creative thought. He'll give you a creative miracle. He'll give you a creative healing. Man, as you pray, I love this. Jesus revealed himself to his disciples as they watched him pray. As your children watch you pray, there will be a transfiguration. Your children's life will be changed. Your children's life will be healed. Let them watch you pray. They may not pray, but you pray and then they pray. Amen. Real quickly, number six. He also prayed in others, in others' moments of need. Mary and Martha were overwhelmed at the death of their brother Lazarus. And Jesus ordered the stone to be removed. Remember that story? And, and then Jesus prayed at the grave. Come on, this is the time where people are in grave condition. They're in grave condition. This is where you call someone. Don't just text. Let me just text them. Do you need prayer? Oh, here I'm praying for you. No. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm calling you. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. What are you dealing with? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bam. Number seven. 
Jesus stripped with prayer in Gethsemane. This is where I want to get into that theme. Everybody say drip. Come on. If you ain't dripping, you're tripping. Let me say that again. If you ain't dripping, you're tripping. Let me give you a quick story. I remember uh, I like to cook. I'm a cooker, especially a barbecuer. And uh, I tend to like to inject my, my meats with sauces. And I remember a particular time when I was, uh, I think I was making chicken. Uh, and, uh, and, and I made this, this special sauce. It was my own creation. And I was all excited, you know, I'm, not, I'm working it, man. Come on, working it, working it, working it, working it, doing all my mixing and everything. And I set it up on the table, and, uh, and I went back to go probably wash the chicken. And, and, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm a messy cook. Any messy cookers out there? Come on, can I get an amen? Come on, you got stuff everywhere, man, just a mess. I'm one of those people, praise God. But that's the deal, man. Uh, I cook, the family cleans. That's the way it works. My wife and I said, okay, you do the cooking, I do the cleaning. Done. And so I remember I, I turn around and I hit the, uh, the, the sauce bowl. And the sauce, it's kind of like, no. You see, you can, can you get the image in your head? Sauce bowl goes over, bam, all over the table. And it just starts falling to the ground. And in my head, I'm thinking, no. You know, I'm just like, ah. You know, I'm losing it, man. I'm in agony. I'm tripping. Listen to me. I'm having a mo moment of tripping. And so it's all dripping now. It's dripping all over the floor. And, and check this out. <laughs> what I saw as a mess, long behold, my dog bear, my dog bear came out of nowhere just whoom, and just starts licking up the blessing. See, while I was tripping, he was dipping. <laughs> he was licking up all the mess. He saw opportunity. He said, oh, praise the Lord. And he was running. Man, I'll tell you, he cleaned the floor for me. What I saw as a mess, he saw as a blessing. See, right now, you're either seeing all of the things you're experiencing right now. You're either seeing all this as a big mess or you're seeing this as an opportunity for blessing. Now let me read you the verse. I hope that made sense. So Jesus shows us how to address conflict and crisis. And Luke, did I give you guys the verse? Uh, Luke, you guys have that one? I, I, yeah, okay, good. I, I, I think I erased it from mine, but it's in Luke something. Luke, there you go, 22. Look at this. And being in anguish, say this, anguish. Okay, this is Jesus. Jesus is in anguish. It's okay to have an emotional feeling. It's okay to have a moment. Jesus shows us this is how you deal with conflict. You will feel anguish. You will feel agony. You will feel despair. You'll go through this. He's teaching the disciples that even though you pray, you're going to have emotions that are going to be a great conflict to you. Stay with me. He says he prayed more earnestly. Listen, when you're in despair, you pray more earnestly. When you're sad, you pray more earnestly. When you're in fear, you pray more earnestly. When you're in doubt, you pray more earnestly. He was in agony, he was in anguish, and he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like what? Drip. His sweat was like what? Drops of blood falling to the ground. And how many know that the drops of blood, the blood covers the multitude of sins. Come on. The blood is the protection plan of Almighty God. Come on. The blood of Jesus. Man, it was literally dripped with grace and forgiveness and mercy and love. All that drip of the blood through prayer was a blessing for you and me. I hope I'm talking to you today. Listen to this. Drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he rose, everybody say, and when he rose. See, you, you can drop in despair. You can drop in depression. You can drop in anxiety. And you can be in that lowest point of your life of darkness and 
confusion. But as you start praying, regardless of how you feel, let me tell you something. You rise up again at some point. You rise up. And little bit by little bit, it may not happen right there on the spot, but little by little, let me tell you something, you start getting stronger. Little by little, you start getting more courage. Little by little, you start having more faith. He says, and when he rose from prayer, watch this. Please don't, don't tune out. When he rose from prayer and he went back to the disciples, when he, when he got up and he went back to the church, the global church, Elevate Church, every church, he found them asleep. He found them what? Say it, asleep. He found them asleep, exhausted from what? Sorrow. He found them this way, asleep. Jesus said, please pray. I'll be right back. I'm going to go pray. You pray. And he goes. It was one hour of prayer, and he comes back, and they're asleep. Because they were exhausted and they were filled with sorrow. He said, why are you sleeping? He asked them, get up. Get up. That is the word from heaven right now. Get up, America. Get up, church. Wake up. Don't be home resting, falling asleep. This is the hour of prayer. This is the hour of healing. This is the hour of miracles. This is the hour of revival. Wake up. Get up. Amen. That's right there. You get up off your chair right there and be like, amen. Amen. I'm getting up. Get up. I love this. He says, get up and pray so that you will not fall into what? Temptation. Ooh, that's so good. So often in our life, we associate God with being comfortable. Well, God is my comfort. God, I'm just going to sleep. I'm sleeping in the Lord's arms. Man, get your butt up and pray. I'm just resting in the Lord. Okay, rest in the Lord. Praise Jesus. Rest in prayer. Come on, get in the presence of God. Come on, posture yourself in the presence of God. Kneel. In the presence of God. But we have this issue as the church where we constantly associate God with comfortable. Not realize, realizing that it's the devil who makes your life comfortable. God doesn't make you comfortable. The devil makes you comfortable. It's the devil that will put you to sleep. It's the devil that will go ahead and just rock my baby on the treetop. Blah, 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 blah. No. Listen. That's, that's what the devil does. He makes your life comfortable to the point where he makes you think that you don't need God. That's what happened to the disciples. They were so comfortable that they were tempted to fall asleep. In return, Jesus needed them as much as the disciples should have needed God. But they fell asleep. And, 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 and you sleep in time of crisis when God needs you. We cannot sleep right now, church. And, 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 and it's God that, that will allow. And, and I know because people have asked me this question like, did God put this sickness on us? Did God put this disease on us? Did God do this whole thing? Let me tell you something. I'm going to be straight up with you. That's not my question, whether God did this or not. I don't believe that God is going to infect us with a disease, but God will use it for a greater purpose. He'll use it. I'll tell you, he will use every conflict. Think about it. He uses every conflict to grow us. How can you think that you're going to be a faith person and have nothing to believe for? That's like going to the gym and, 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 and you've been going to the gym and you know you've been toning up, getting ripped, getting tight. And then one day you just decide, ah, you know what? I'm not going to tone up anymore. I'm not going to lift anymore. But you still expect the same results. That's kind of stupid. It's just going to happen. No, it's not just going to happen. God is saying, I want you to make something happen. We need to see what Jesus displayed. That when you're in conflict, it's not a bad thing. That when you're in trouble, it's not a bad thing. That when you are challenged, it is not a bad thing. 
Jesus was showing his disciples, when you're in trouble, when you're in agony, when you're in anguish, when you're in despair, that's when you pray. Satan will bring you comfort. He'll make you comfortable in the sense of, is what I'm saying. He'll make you comfortable. He'll get you sleepy. You'll be falling asleep instead of praying as the church right now. It's times like this where God literally will make this virus, this fear, this crisis, man, many people drop to their knees. Let me tell you something. You have to be thankful for the crisis. You know why? Because it brings you to a place of humility. It brings you to a place of knowing how fragile your life is, how fragile our economy is. For those of you that have been putting your trust in our economy, man, let me tell you something. It just got shook. You keep trusting on your economy, you'll keep living in despair. You put your faith and trust in God Almighty. In God we trust is what my currency says. And I think we use the same one. I'm not using pesos. I'm using dollars. Amen. I'm using American currency. But guess what? My currency is my faith. My currency is my prayer. That's my currency. My currency is my connection. My currency is God's presence in my life. That's your currency. So that we can arise. Amen. When we need, listen, we need, we need to stop. Do you guys remember, we preached so many sermons here. I'm already done. We preached so many sermons here. Come on. We need to pray for, we need to pray for conflict. And it was like, hey, amen, hey, amen, yay, woo. We need to pray for giants in the land. Why? Because we know that our enemy, it brings conflict, but conflict brings growth. And we're amen, amen. Come on, we need to pray for giants. Because if you pray for a giant, that means there's a promised land right on the other side of that giant. But all of a sudden, everything gets difficult. Everything gets hard. Things get shifted. Come on, you're having to learn how to adapt. And you're like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't No, we've been praying for giants in the land. If you don't have an enemy, then there's nothing to fight for. And anything that is worth fighting for, God will use it to bless you. Look in the Bible. Every disciple had a fight to walk in, to step in to the promised land. Every person had a fight to see healing in their life, to re see restoration in their family. You got to fight for it. <laughs> Come on, I need discomfort. Say that with me. I need discomfort. Say it. I need discomfort or else I will become despondent that means you will become powerless discomfort brings you it brings you courage to fight for something let's stop running from this conflict stop running from your problems stop running from the things you've been praying for God to bless no we will be like David and we will face the giants of our land. We will face this coronavirus. We will face this economy, but we'll face it with God in prayer because prayer is the key. Amen. It's the key. It's the key to our weapon. The weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty in God to pull down strongholds is what the Bible says. Read your Bible. It's what it says. We're not running. We're not running. Say it to your neighbor. I'm not running. <laughs> the word earnestly, it'll be on your screen. It means this. It refers to emotional combat. That word earnestly means going back and forth. Back and forth. If you read the whole context of the story, Jesus went back and forth with God three times. He went back and forth to his disciples three times. Three. What's, what's the number three mean? Resurrection. God is about to resurrect this church. God is about to resurrect your house. God is about to resurrect your finances, your family, your health. Three times. In despair, Jesus had this internal battle. He's, he's dealing with this. Why? Because he knew that in a few hours, he was about to be abandoned by his own people. 
He was about to be abandoned by God the Father. He was going to be separated from God through the path of the cross, which was lonely. Let me tell you something. So it wasn't just being in despair. No, he knew what he was about to take on. He kept praying, Father, if you can let this cup of suffering pass me by, please do it. Three times he's praying for this. He knew that in the next 12 hours he was going to be arrested, put on trial. Three trials in total. It's amazing. Three times he prayed to the Father and he was on trial three different occasions before he had to go through that, that brutal beating, that stripping, that tearing, that breaking. Three times. But he just, just kept coming back and, and he was warning his disciples, when you, when you face troubles, man, don't fall asleep. What are you doing? Wake up. Lest the tempter tempt you. This is the time where you have to arise and pray. And he's telling them this over and over and over again. And we know that, that Jesus was, was at this point of, of feeling all this agony. But yet he prays to the Father and he says this. He ends it with this. He says, but Father, not my will. Let your will be done. I'm praying for all of you right now watching. I'm praying that you would come to the place where you're bringing the pure language back. Not wimpy prayers. Not let me get through this prayer. But prayers that connect. I want you to watch on social media, follow us. I'm going to have a, just, just prayer. I'm not preaching, just prayer. I'm going to have it live either on Monday or Tuesday. Pray, just pay attention. How about this? Let's just say Monday at 7 p.m. That's tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'm going to meet with us for just an hour. I want all of you to tune in. We're just going to pray. We're going to pray. You're going to pray. As I'm praying, you're going to be walking around your house praying. We're going to do this tomorrow at 7 p.m. I know I just threw the media for a loop. They're like, what the? No, they're good. They're like, yes, prayer. 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We're going to pray for one hour. One hour. Just going to pray. We're going to play music in the background. Not our worship team, but just music because I want our worship team praying. And we're just going to pray. And, 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 and when you come to that place of I will, here's what you'll say. I will drip. With faith over fear in my life. I will drip prayer over worry. I will drip peace over stress. I will drip hope over despair. I will drip victory over defeat. I will drip my pure language over my negative one. Amen. I will drip. I will drip. I will drip. I'm dripping with encouragement. I'm dripping. I want us to pray the Lord's Prayer real quick. And before we do that, you're watching right now, some of you. You don't have a relationship with God. You've been far away from God. You know about Him, but you don't know Him. You need to know Him. Whether, whether you're someone that's that's not religious, maybe you're saying I'm not a religious person. I'm inviting you to a personal relationship with Jesus. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one who died on a cross for you, paid for your sins. He's the only one that was beat. He was ripped, stripped, broken, pierced for your sins. It was his blood that forgave you of your sins. But you have to receive him. You have to invite him. Or maybe you're a Christian watching and you've been, you've been, far away from God, you walked away from God, you're like the prodigal son or daughter and you're coming back to God, guess what? You can pray this prayer too right now. And if you receive Christ today, whether you're receiving him for the first time or whether you're someone that's coming back to God, I want you to type in the comments right now, I want you to write, I receive Christ. Just write that, I receive Christ. I receive Christ. That's it, just type that in please. Type it in. And then you can text your information. It's on the screen to the number that's there. And allow us to call you back and pray for you. Just to love on you. And so at the count of three, I want you to type, 
I receive Christ. One, you're not afraid. Two, you know this is the perfect hour for you. Three, if that's you, go. Type it right now. Type it right now. And let's pray this all together. All of you watching on screen, pray this with me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I invite you into my life. Clean me. Strengthen me. Renew me. Today, I receive you as Lord and Savior. Today, I realize that without you, I can't do nothing. I can't be nothing. I can't be the person you've called me to be. The person I was born to become. So today, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you did that, God bless you. Now let's do the Lord's Prayer. And as we do the Lord's Prayer, we're coming to our close now. And then you'll watch our Easter promo that's coming up. But let's pray this together. All of you on the screen, let's post that up there, please, the Lord's Prayer. At the count of three, when I count, let's all do it together right now. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of homes are going to be repeating this prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. I love you guys. Monday at 7 p.m. We will have an hour of prayer. Tune in. And then Wednesday night we'll be back to our Wednesday night service as well. We love you guys. God bless you. Keep sharing the links. Come on, keep sharing the links. Get people involved. Let them see the message. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. They first took off his clothes. Then they took long leather thongs with steel pellets or lead pellets on the end and beat him across the back until he could hardly stand up. Then they put a crown of thorns on his brow and his face was bleeding. And they laughed at him and they spit on him and they mocked him. Was there ever such love as that? On the cross, he said, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then he dropped his head and said, It's finished. And when they went out to the tomb that morning, they heard the greatest news the world has ever known. He is not here. He is risen.